guys i hope you all are doing really great and preparing hard for board exams we are here again with yet another session of sprint x the ultimate countdown and i am your teacher ashpreet and we are going to cover today this chapter from history work life and leisure so let's get started we're going to analyze one mark question three mark questions and then we're going to follow it it's going to be followed by five marks questions so you guys have to be very very attentive when we talk about one mark questions so let's get started okay so let's me let me see who's going to be the first one to answer these questions the very first is okay it's a very easy question which city is known as city of dreams you guys better be quick on this cool it is bombay now you call it as mumbai cool next question is who developed the principle of garden city principle of garden city guys what comes to your mind okay yes it is ebenezer howard that's cool okay let's proceed to the third question okay just guess if you guys can guess that's great the book who wrote this book let me write the book the bitter cry of outcast london any idea who wrote this book yes i got good answers okay andrew cool and if i ask you the next question is uh, can you just name one thing that actually helped um, you know come up with the factor that actually changed the modern industry especially when we talk about developed countries that follow this practice a lot so just one practice or one factor that led a lot that led to a lot of changes that we probably see in the modern world what is it like what tendency of exploitation that went at Uh, you know especially against the colonial people yeah many of you got it right it is capitalism so this practice this factor has changed the form of organizations in a lot of modern world countries cool guys intelligent now let's proceed to the next question that is okay uh can you just tell me one novel or the novel that's written by Durga Charan Ray about the city of Calcutta. What's the name of that novel? Uh, that novel. Yeah, of course, the gods visit Earth. That's cool. And what is the other name? Debganer. Very good. That's right. Agman. Cool. Okay. And what about the next question? If you guys know which city is known as this. like the other name which city's name which which city do we know is known as this again yes it's a bombay cool guys we discussed six questions under 3 minutes cool seventh question is okay what if i ask you what or who made the film raja harish chandra who made this film any idea any guess cool it is dada saheb falke cool on that note let's proceed forward okay guys can you tell me one or maybe the first indian city to get a smoke nuisance act or legislature passed like the first indian city no oh, wow that's kolkata all of you got it right okay few more questions before we proceed to the important questions because these upcoming questions have been asked in cbsc exam so better be attentive now so what is what okay simple question guys what if they ask you what do you understand by migration you guys know before i jump to the next question that migration is a movement of people maybe from one region to another that is when you talk about migration but what if the question is asked what do you understand by chols so this was basically this question was also asked in cbsc 2013 exam so what do you understand by chols important question yes of course they are multi storied structured 
or structures which are divided so they are, these are multi storied structures which are divided into a number of you can say small apartments or small rooms so these rooms they are also known as tenements and such multi storied sections uh, structures that are divided into rooms known as tenements they are known as chawls mostly seen in india we will see them in bombay especially okay let's proceed to the next question that is okay uh, can you talk about individualism what do you understand on when did this concept see come into picture so what happened a lot of people they were living uh, together initially and when there was proto industrialization everybody was you know producing stuff uh, within the household using the household labor and stuff like that but over the time because of development of industries that took place and also because of increased need in labor so people had to migrate from one region to the other because of which the family or the marriages and in institutes started to break down we see a lot of changes people uh, you know they, there was this theory that emphasized on individual liberty that talked about right to independence and also an uh, you know sort of uh, people who were living alone from their family and uh, developing the concept of working for themselves so that all is covered under the basic definition of individualism so this individual individualism if if you've asked if you're asked in the exam you can state that individualism individualism came into a uh, picture and gained a lot of uh, weight or popularity with the coming of industrial revolution and especially when people had to migrate for work from one place to other okay what if you're asked about presidency cities any idea what are three presidency cities yes the initial cities that is bombay bombay bengal and madras these are known as the presidency cities okay guys this question has been asked over and over again what do you understand by akhadas any idea what do you understand by akhadas because the earlier question was also asked in cbse 2009 exam the presidency cities but now i'm talking about what do you do you know that akhadas it is that traditional you can say the wrestling yes the wrestling schools the traditional wrestling schools they are known as akharas and what if the most important question from the chapter is asked that what do you understand by temperance movement so what happened a lot of people they started to consume uh, you know uh, consume a lot of alcohol liquor so in a movement that uh, you know specially wanted or talked about preventing the people from consumption of liquor and sorts of any other sort of alcoholic drink that that was very much popular uh, getting popularity in the middle class of united kingdoms and usa so the movement that talked about curtailing putting or prohibiting people from using or consuming alcohol is one that we talk in uh, temperance movement i hope it's clear to all of you now let's proceed to the three mark question we have here so the question is so better be careful because i'm going to talk about a lot in this chapter and it will be easy for you to revise the chapter also simultaneously so better be attentive and do not talk in the class so let's get started so the very first question is explain any three problems faced by the people who migrated to bombay so this question before i start off this has been asked in 2015 exam also so they've asked in 2015 exam so let me tell you what are the three problems for the people who uh, migrated see migrated to bombay of course there is going to be individualism that started to take shape and people had to live alone and st stuff like that but they are specifically constant you know trying to ask that what were the problems that people faced who migrated to bombay okay so let me put it right here the answer should be before we discuss the answer that's written here okay so the answer the problems of the people who migrated to bombay especially in uh, mid 19th century
so number one was the housing issue when i talk about housing that means you have to talk uh, you know focus on this issue they were forced to live in cheap so what is the problem when you migrate from your own place of course you're not given uh, at times you don't get good accommodation so yes people who migrated they were having houses cri housing crisis they were living in cheap and very unsafe multi storied apartments that we just talked about chawls and more than 70% of the migrants they lived in all that thickly populated chawls so they were they were very overcrowded there were no toilets and basic facilities were not available so you're going to talk about that so this is the first issue that they faced then of course something that you need that's very very important you might have seen a lot in indian serials also the women they have to go out fetch water and you know wake up early to ensure that everybody has adequate supply of water to drink and to take bath so they have to you know stand in a long queue and then uh, get their needs served so the second problem is there was yes shortage of water and also not only water but also other basic amenities they were not there so that means this led to a lot of quarrels on daily basis there was issue people people used to sleep on streets uh, and used to cook in the neighborhood washing was done so everything is done it's like a multi storied apartment like this and we have open space so either people used to do cooking or you know people uh, the children used to play here in the open space so there were a lot of stalls out here so like it was very overcrowded third important thing they yes had to face a lot of caste discrimination they were still not treated uh, in the right way the depressed classes had a very tough time in finding the house for themselves they had to you know they they were actually kept out of the uh, chawl so they had to live on shelters that were made either of sheets or of leaves or maybe of even of bamboo poles so they used to make all that stuff and used to live there because they were not allowed to live in chawl so there was caste discrimination and last point that there was also spread of there was fear of spread of diseases because when you live in overcrowded areas so that unplanned way and the constant danger of spread of some epidemic diseases like plague or maybe other communicable diseases is always there so yes these were the main issues that were being faced by the people who actually migrated from bombay uh you know for search or who migrated to bombay in the mid 19th century so i talked about housing problem they used to live in one room tenements they had a lot of pop you know they were thickly populated and even you know the weather was closed windows they had to keep the windows closed because they had gutters very near to their places i'm going to take it in the next questions so because of that humid weather close proximity of those gutters and buffalo stables they they were facing that okay there was a constant fear that they might you know get uh, some disease attack or something of that sort so i'm of course going to talk that yes another question if they ask you before i uh, complete this one so we talked about water shortage we talked about various activities they used to undertake um on the streets and stuff like that but yes before we proceed to this question when and why was the rent act passed in bombay if if this question is asked please be you know you have to write that the rent act was passed in bombay in 1980 so that they could keep a check or they could control the rents rate it was uh, it had of course it had a negative effect on the landlords because you know who would do houses from the market and then they caused severe housing crisis because rent act was passed so what happened there was a lot of population who were looking for uh, you know house to live to stay temporary stay and all so they uh, actually the cost was very much a lot of cost was charged by the landlords so what happened after 1980 the rent act was passed and then because they were not getting enough they were not making good money so the landlords decided that we're going to create an artificial scarcity that we don't have houses that we can lend out automatically they're going to control have a control over the rent 
that means everybody is going to be ready to pay whatever they're going to ask so yes there was a negative impact that was seen because landlords they withdrew their houses from the market that's that actually caused a very severe crisis a very severe situation uh, and the scarcity went even up so that was the case and what if they ask you another question that is generally asked that i want to discuss is like what is the concept of garden city especially when we talk about garden city so this is one question and what is the concept of garden city see this garden city was basically introduced uh, to decongest the localities in london so what was the case because like in bombay we are talking about bombay similar condition was seen in london also so in order to have more green spaces that would serve as the you know lungs in the city because uh, there was a lot of cho you know choking uh, under the because of the pollution and the crowd so for this for th for the less pollution that they could have for, for green belts that they could come up and also have a very pleasant space that was full of plants trees and where people a, a space where people could live and work together so this system was developed in england this system of uh, concept of garden city was developed by the planner whose name we just discussed it is ebenzer howard so i'm going to repeat it again so the concept of garden cities was introduced the very first concept to decongest the localities wherever the people were living they wanted to decongest they just wanted them to have a very spacious environment that they could live with so that wherever they are living we have more green spaces we uh, that green spaces could serve as the lungs for the city so that there is no more choking activity also pollution is under control uh, the populate the pollution is under control so for this less uh, you know less polluted uh, blocks are important apartments they are looking for or a housing arrangement that supported green belts for that matter so a more pleasant space you have that is full of trees uh, plants and different kinds of flowers that looks beautiful to view at and also would actually help uh, keep the pollution under control and also the, this space concept it was developed so that people could live and work at the same time in the in that area so it was developed by the planner and architect whose name we just discussed it is ebenzer howard okay let's proceed to the next question on that note so the next question is who are philanthropists a very important question again it has been asked and we we might expect this one so explain any two uh, steps taken to control the crime in 1817s first i'm going to address this part who are philanthropists see philanthropist is basically a social worker who works for the upliftment uh, or maybe for public morality who contributes by donating money by donating some time for the it actually is to bring the society to for the betterment of the society so yes they are ready to contribute money they are ready to contribute uh, time just to for the society for the sake of upliftment of the people so what were the steps taken uh, because there was a lot of crime rate why was the crime rate increasing first you need to understand this guys see people were not getting jobs there was a lot of criminal activity a person could make more by uh, getting involved into the criminal activities rather than working round the clock in the industries so what happened the criminal activities they started to take shape they started to increase and suddenly in order to you know take a charge of these criminal activities number one of course like every government would do they imposed heavy penalties and uh, they imposed heavy penalties they said no this is not going to work and you know uh, second thing that they did is you know they co they constantly had a very they kept a very uh, they they started to keep a very clear watch on the activities and you know investigating on the life of the criminals that were actually involved into all this so that is that were the basic two things that they took uh, control of so let's proceed to the next question that is how 
did the development or expansion of Bombay differ from London? So it's a very important question. Yes, it has been asked in 2012 also. CBSE exam 2012, it has been asked. So let's just cover what was the differences in development uh, that took place or expansion in Bombay as compared to London. Okay, so very first thing, Bombay developed as a port town whereas London developed as an industrial town. So you've got one point right away. So yes, it was a port town and London was an industrial town. The pace at which Bombay developed, so the pace of development, you know, it was very slow in Bombay as compared to, uh, in Bombay it was very slow as compared to London. So this is going to be the second point. Third point, see, uh, if I talk about, yes, people were living in congested situation in unhygienic and safe condition. But if you see the availability of land, the land that was available or given to a person, it was very less in Bombay as compared to London. So there was, uh, it, it faced, there was scarcity of land, whereas London, quite had you know uh, some land that was available especially in the countryside they did had good land to offer uh, so that people could live there next important point would be the bombay you know development in bombay it was actually because of the fear of spread of plague they always fear that there, there's going to be a spread of plague and people would get infected by um, some diseases, some communicable, uh, communicative dis communicable diseases and stuff like that. Whereas if you talk about London, the development that took place in London was the fear of spread of, there's a difference guys, it was because of so diseases, it was because of the spread of social disorder that people might start revolting against us and we don't want anything of that sort to take place so that is why they planned that carbon you know garden city and new new concepts were coming and taking shape so this is the right answer how you're going to attempt this question i hope i've made my point clear bombay developed as port town london as an industrial town the space of development or the pace of development in Bombay was very slow as compared to London. And also there was scarcity of land also. Whereas in London, it had plenty of land in the countryside. Then, you know, Bombay developed because there was fear of plague, spread of plague or any disease. But if you talk about London, it actually, you know, developed or took a new shape a model of development because of spread of social disorder that people might start revolting against us and the government could not afford that okay let's proceed to the next question okay important one like we discussed this one london was a colonial city also and it was a group of seven islands it was a premier city first then of course like i told you in bombay it was 9.5 square yards whereas the availability of uh, land was 155 square yards in london every person in london could enjoy this much and as compared to that in uh, bombay it's quite less especially bombay fort area was divided into you can also write that yes the bombay fort area was divided into native town where most of the indians live and the other section was white uh section where most of the white section uh lived that was quite developed so yes it was this section of uh this this sort of divided the people uh on the basis of their color that was not a good concept so the pace of development was also different if you talk about town town planning in london it was because just i told a uh, social disorder or maybe because of social revolution whereas in bombay it was because of the spread of plague epidemic okay now if we see the next question so the next question is what was land reclamation in bombay why was it necessary mention any two land reclamation projects 
taken up in Bombay. So land reclamation means, see, I was this question again, it has been asked in 2011 exam. So I'll explain what this question is and what you're supposed to write in this question. See, uh, because it was, uh, Bombay was serving as a multifunctional presidency city or a, uh, one of the those most important presidency cities of uh, British era. So what happened, The you know, it kind of witnessed a lot of surge of migrant labor. So there was a lot of influx or a lot of surge in migrant labor coming. So to accommodate them, so a lot of people, because the city had to expand, so to accommodate a large number of people, the expansion of city was of course required because that couldn't serve the purpose. We just saw in the last question that the availability of land per person in Bombay was very less, approximately 9.5 yards. But to ensure that every person has that land to accommodate a large number of population, there was a need, there was a requirement that yes, we have a scarcity of land and we need to address this issue. So the only way out was through land reclamation. That you means you reclaim the land, you bring new area under process that can be used. So there were two main projects that were taken up in Bombay in 18th century. Number one was reclamation. I'll show you here. The first one is reclamation of Western. So Bombay was a multi fist There were rapid industrialization. A lot of people were coming. You can state the facts. But of course, you're not supposed to remember all this. It's not important to remember this. You can just state that there was a lot of influx of migrant labor at that time. Then it was a presidency city and became a major administrative center. So there was again, uh, because of influx of labor, there was need to reclaim the land. It was a necessity at that time. It was not optional, but it turned out to be a basic necessity. So there were two projects like we talked about. So the very first one, I, I didn't tell you. So the first one was the reclamation done in 1864. The Back Bay uh, Reclamation Company it won the rights to reclaim the Western foreshore that you guys know from Malabar tip to end of Kolaba. And the second one was uh, the development of that dry dock between 1914. This was done between 1914 and 1980. So what happened is uh, there was a development of dry dock between 1914 to 1980 by Bombay Trust Port. So they decided that we're going to reclaim that this this is the area where they uh, you know actually excavated the earth and used to create a barred estate. So this is how yeah this is written and they used to create this state. So subsequently it was you know it, it it's uh, now famous by the name of Marine Drive. Cool guys. So yes, because of influx of labor, because Bombay was developing, first you have to give the reason that yes, Bombay was developing, it witnessed a surge of population that was coming. So there was a necessity to reclaim the land. And these are the two important projects that are related to land reclamation. That means the surrounding area was bought under a development process. Cool. So on that note, let's proceed to the next question that is, there was, oh, sorry, Explain how uh, Europeans, okay, important question. Explain how Europeans overcame the problem of shortage of labor willing to work for wages in Africa. Important one. Now, let me tell you what was the issue. So, if you talk about Africa, what happens is Africa was initially a self sufficient economy. People didn't feel the need, you know, to work for wages or they never required that, okay, uh, we need to, uh, they, they felt that we are self-sufficient, it's not important for us, uh, we are doing really great in our life. But with the influx of Europeans and since they were looking for a lot of labor who could serve them, who could serve their needs. So what they did is very smartly, they decided that we are going to change the laws that are there prevalent there in Africa. So what did they come up? Which concept did they come up? So first of all, what they did is, let's say they changed the inheritance law. 
so for example this is a father and uh, what happens earlier the property was if the if he had four sons the property was divided equally among the four sons but now because of change in the inheritance laws the the person only one uh, of the kid could inherit the entire property and it was not divided or distributed among the other people so yes the european employers initially they found it very difficult to recruit the africa because uh, in africa because it had that history of abundant land first is of course it had abundant land but it had a very scarce population so yes they were uh, you know self sufficient somewhere so they 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 had a very a sustained livelihood there was no need to work for wages but in late 19th century uh, you know in africa there were few i would say consumer goods that they that came up so because of the coming up of consumer goods there was little reason to work for wage because they started to like all those consumer goods now they decided okay we need to work something so europeans were now attracted towards africa because it was a land uh, that had good resources that that was rich in minerals so the africa was actually having good plantation and mines uh, where they could crop and you know ex port the minerals and earn money so first what methods they used i told you about inheritance second they imposed heavy taxes so even if you are self sufficient if you are and if you are not ready to pay and if you are not able to pay those heavy taxes uh, from whatever you make from plantation or mines of course you have to work on wages for the britishers so this is how they tried to manipulate the situation so first is they changed the inheritance law only one member of the family could now inherit the property and second they imposed heavy taxation uh, that was paid that could only be paid if you are working uh, as a wage work if you are working for the plantation or maybe working in mines so these were the two practices that they followed in order to turn situation in their into their in their favor so let's look at the answer the answer is imposed heavy taxes paid by only the people who were uh, working in plantation or maybe in mines for that matter inheritance laws were also changed to displace the peasants basically this was done on on purpose so that they could throw out the people from work from their farm from their own farm and third mine workers this is something important the mine workers were confined to their compounds so before you tell this please give a very brief introduction that africa was initially a self sufficient economy people didn't feel the need but with the coming of a few consumer goods they thought that it's important for them now to work for wages so that they could get hold of all those consumer goods and it after that uh, you know the europeans noticed that okay we've got enough resources we've got enough mines we got enough people so why not to take advantage of this situation i hope i have made this question clear to you guys cool so let's proceed to the next question that is oh explain what is like the pic says right here explain what was the tradition of london season explain different forms of entertainment that came up in 19th century in england to provide leisure activities for the people okay so by the way this question i'll tell you has been asked in 2009 exam also so it's better if you guys concentrate of what i am trying to say see uh london season the tradition of london season it was what what actually took shape in late 9 in late 18th century a lot of cultural events or uh, like operas or maybe theaters or maybe classical music stuff like that performances they started to take shape and they were basically organized for all the wealthy people moving back so london season coming back to london season like i told you in late 18th century all the culture cult, uh, cultural events uh, like operas lit theater classical music initially they were only and only organized for wealthy or maybe very good you know well off section for the england later these events 
these events only took an annual turn like they were organized annually they started to initially they were organized uh, in one place or the other not together but one event or the other but later on what happened is these events they were organized on annual basis and together they were known as london season so because with the coming of 19th century other forms of entertainment also started for example you have now even today we have all those pubs where people used to meet they used to drink and they used to discuss about their life what is going on their work culture and stuff like that then there was uh, you know they 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 were basically organized for that political action to mobilize the people exchange their news then there were pleasure gardens for example that that for example that green belts and all that were a sort of uh, that provided a refreshment or i would say uh, an activity sport activity could take place but these were basically for well to do uh, families they could only afford to go to that gardens like we have now then you have the coming up of libraries a lot concept of life with the coming of libraries a lot of things changed libraries museums so a lot of things like that came up that equipped people with their sense see with libraries and museums people could relate to their past they could see that we've got a good history so yes with this it was not only that it was a past time but yes it it brought a sense of pride you know of all the historical achievement that had taken shape so people were feeling so confident at this time and also there were for poor people there were music halls there were also cinemas that that sort of actually entertained mixed audience so everybody was allowed to go there and also the industrial workers uh, what happened at weekends they used to go on beaches you know to get the benefit of the sun and all those bracing winds that were flow, you know blowing at that time so this is all that were seen when we talk about other forms of entertainment that took that came up in england in 19th century so let's see what the answer is again revise it pubs gardens libraries music halls that offered that was offered to mixed audience then all the industrial workers who went to the beaches to have a very very good time cool so let's see the answer several events that were organized for the group of families later it changed and they were organized annually and that was known as london season then the working class like i told you they met at pubs they exchanged news then there were galleries art galleries there were museums that were set up there were music halls especially that were very popular among the lower class people so we've answered you've covered one section of this chapter imagine you've covered garden city you've covered difference of london and bombay then you've covered different sources of entertainment libraries halls and you also talked about philanthropist you talked about problem faced by the people in england so even now i'm going to talk about prime city also that question came in 2010 exam cbsc so let's see what the next question is how is development let's see how is development so we're going to talk about the negative effects of development related to the cost of ecology and environment explained by giving examples of industrial city of england in 19th century so yes see when there is development in the city of course it's going to come at the cost of environment this is the very first statement that you're going to give development comes with the cost and that cost is going to be borne by the environment so what was the you know how can you justify it see because there was growing demand uh, there was growing demand for factories there were going gro uh, growing demand for housing so this led to destruction of all the natural habitat that was there all the forest everything a lot of things were shattered and brought down just because they were ex you know expecting to have land in their control second large uh, quantities of you know waste 
was actually going it was not only from the industries that was polluting the environment but also because of all the house homes also household sort of polluted uh, the environment the uh, the water bodies and stuff like that third there was widespread use something very very important that nobody is going to write but you guys are going to definitely talk about it is the widespread use of coal see now you got the point coal and wood especially in uh, you know uh, industries that they, they use this coal and wood so that sort of what a lot of changes in the environment so now they're going to talk about industrial cities so yes households are, were also there but also there was use of a lot of coal and wood that actually impacted uh, you know badly the uh, environment at this time and also you can talk about excessive noise pollution that came from industries that came from railways because you know Farrington to Paddington they had constructed an underground railways so yes all of these factors have to be taken care of so natural features were shattered a uh, large quantity of waste was dumped by uh, that was a common feature of urban life now also we see unless and until government does not take up the responsibility to you know charge the people who are using uh, you know in the morning or in the evening uh, they're watering their plants they're using water fresh water to clean their cars and just stand up with a pipe in the morning and they start doing that so the government has imposed penalty that you can't do it you can't waste water so they fixed the number of hours because it's like people used to enjoy doing that. They used to have a very good time, you know, uh, taking water in their hand and then cleaning their car for hours together. So now, the, unless and until government does not take up steps, nobody is going to, uh, you know, be very sensitive to the environment. So yes, the urban wastes also come from the, uh, you know, uh, sorry, industrial wastes or... Uh, also is supplemented by the urban people who are living there who enjoy a luxurious lifestyle and stuff like that cool so we also talked about the use of coal white said problem industries like Leeds and manchester they they, they were em emitting smoke like anything the skies actually look gray so there were black fog uh, that actually uh, controlled the entire town and actually spread in the when somebody used to put clothes outside to get, allow them to dry they used to get dirty because of the smoke particles that were prevalent there maybe the fly ash or something but it was a hell like situation cool guys so let's proceed to the next question a very important question why is Mumbai known as the city of dreams? Can you give three reasons to justify this answer? Despite of its overcrowded nature because of the pollution, it is known as Maya Nagri or city of dreams. This is going to be the introduction that you have to give. Yes, it is overcrowded, but at the same side, it has a flip side associated to it that it is Maya Nagri, it is city of dreams. A lot of people come there every day. You know, it's often said the people don't care about each other. You don't have space to keep your feet and, you know, move forward. You'll face a lot of problem. But Bombay's films that are made there in Bombay, they've contributed in a big way. Uh, you know, uh, to uh, shape the culture of India. For example, they've brought people from all the culture together. We've uh, the uh, filmmaking career is a bright career out there. So it's a blend of dream and reality for all the slum and star bungalow who live in there. So Shahrukh Khan is living there. Uh, uh, this Ambani's family is living there. But at the same time, there's a there's a lot of people. There are a lot of people who are living in slum area so yes we are facing that controversy contradictory situation here second uh, there was important reason to face it it also became the film uh, capital in uh, 1929 and millions and millions of rupees of course they are spent so yes it's a film capital then uh, first movie was also made here and then from then there was no turning back so dada sahib palke he made like we discussed in this we discussed in one mark question also so he made this first movie 
Dada Sai Falke made the first movie and he also made this Raja Harish Chandra. Cool. So from there on, there was no turning back. Nobody like you go there with a lot of dreams and aspirations. So that is why we have film capital. We have slums and bungalows living together. We've overcrowded yet city of dreams. We have first movie that was move, uh, you know made there. So all these reasons are good enough to support and justify the answer. Cool. So on that note, guys, I'm going to jump to the last question that we have. And that was asked in 2010 exam. So we talked about pollution and all. So this question was passed, asked in uh, prime city of India. This was asked in 2010 exam. So let's see what the question is asking. So it's, it's a five mark question. So I have to answer it accordingly. So let's be careful while we are, uh, you know, concentrating on this question. So what happened? Why up? It's it's known as the prime city. You guys know in 17th century, Bombay was actually a group of how many islands? Good. It was a group of seven islands and it was under Portuguese control. So it was under Portuguese control. Then from there, it went to British in the hands of Britishers after King Charles II, he got married to Portuguese princess. Then what happened? Now I'm going to tell you a storyline. Please be attentive. First, it became a prominent base for East India Company. So what they did, they shifted their capital from Surat to Bombay. They said, okay, this is going to be, uh, this is going to act uh, and help us. So they did that. Second, it became a major cotton textile outlet. So they used to sell a lot of cotton from here. The next what happened, it became as a port. It used to function as a port, you know, and supply a lot of cotton and opium for that matter. After this, what happened? The third important point, after Anglo-Maratha war and especially the defeat of Marathas, it became the capital of Bombay Presidency and this took place in 1819. So it became the capital of Bombay Presidency and finally the city expanded expanded quickly as the trade it grew the you know a lot of communities for example the traders the bankers they came and settled there so yes the city grew because traders the bankers a lot of artisans and even shopkeepers they settled in bombay they decided to settle in bombay and finally uh, there was establishment of textile mills that, uh, you know, uh, uh, acted as a magnet to attract the people from around the cities, uh, surrounding areas and stuff like that. So, yes, first is how Prime City, prominent based of East India Company. First, you're going to narrate the story that, yes, in 17th century, it was group of islands and then it went to uh, Britishers. Then it acted as a prominent base for East India Company cotton textile outlet, then port, please follow the order and the sequence. Then it acted as a port to supply cotton and opium. Then Anglo-Maratha war, defeat of Marathas, quote every relevant information. It's not a prime city because it is known as Maya Nagri or, you know, some uh, uh, that's a film capital. But because of all these events that took place, right from a group of seven islands, it changed all the way into the very prime city. So that's how the story is going to evolve. So let's proceed to the answer. Yes, major outlet for cotton. So they shifted their base from Surat originally group of seven islands and the government approved to build a high wall so that even the flooding does not take place and then there was need for external you know reclamation was also taking place so you can quote that example also and finally like we said uh, the Bombay, like we, we've quoted, we just covered these two examples. So not, I'm not going to cover it again. The Marine Drive of Bombay like that I told you about Bombay Trust 
and then you can quote all that I stated I stated in these uh, examples for example I told you traders bankers came and settled there there were textile mills there was Anglo Maratha war please don't forget to add all these points in the content it is going to help you fetch marks and you can also talk about land reclamation but these points that I just talked about are going to make sense and don't forget to add them. Cool guys? So, okay, fine. On that note, I'm going to end today's session. You guys can get the download, you guys can download the PDF link from the app. And the download link of the app is there in the description box. So, you go download the app, get access to all the videos, uh, other study material, and even more. Uh, classroom notes so thank you so much for attending the session till we meet next take care stay healthy stay hydrated and please respect your parents it's very important to respect your parents okay bye bye guys thank you